Thanks. I had a scary moment when I went to unlock my screen and it said uh, password account disabled. Check with your assistant administrator. <laughs> <laughs> scary. So I have two jobs. Um, I actually get paid 50% out of one and 50% out of the other. I am a technical director for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Engineer Research and Development Center, and I'm also the chief scientist for the High Performance Computing Program for the Department of Defense. Now, lest you think uh, that's a big deal, notice that in the States, a chief scientist position is slightly different than here. We're an advisor, not a manager, so your chief scientists actually control budgets, and I don't, so mm -hmm. they're a bigger deal than I am. And glad, yesterday after listening to the presentation, quite frankly, I've been very impressed by this conference. The uh, numbers are a little smaller than conferences that I attend, but I've been very interested in the content. And so I, last night after we got done with uh, dinner, I went back and I completely redid my presentation. I was gonna give you one presentation and I scrapped it and I put together this one last night. So if it looks crappy, I will blame that. If you don't like it, uh, then you know that, that's the, I'll blame that as a problem. But I did so based upon what I heard yesterday, so I hope that what I present today will be interesting to you. So, uh, I've been doing visualization for a very long time, uh, 25 years now. Uh, these are some of the old stuff that I put together. The left is the Olympic luge and bobsled run from the Salt Lake City Olympics. Uh, then we did some water resources in Salt Lake City, and then the one on the right, which is one of my favorite, actually, presentations I ever did. Uh, they were gonna put a small water retention dam in, and so, uh, they were citing and they said put it here and I did this lovely 3D, uh, 3D visualization and no one had seen the slope failure that they were going to put the dam next to. And if you look closely, there's a nice slope failure there, a lovely cirque. Uh, and so that actually saved them from putting this small, you know, it wasn't a big dam, it was a really small one, but it was kind of cool to show the power of visualization. So then we started doing lots and lots of different types of visualization. And so I've been doing contour plots and vector plots, and doing uh, uh, animation, flow trace animations, if this will work, right? So where you can actually see the water moving through uh, based upon the computational analysis. Um, fascinating, cool stuff. Um, and the videos are not starting automatically, so I apologize. And then we started getting really good at it. Right? So we started taking all of this computational model analysis output and integrating it into this lovely geospatial context, visualizing it and showing it off as this is really cool stuff. This is what really happened. This is a, an animation of the modeling that we did to showcase what happened during Hurricane Katrina and uh, how New Orleans flooded. And quite frankly, this particular model had fantastic verification from the actual data. We highlighted this. This actually video I did 10 years ago, and it's still one of the videos that's shown to showcase the, the work of our laboratory, right? So it's a really, it, I mean, I just marvel at my work, right? So, <laughs> fantastic visualization. So we got a little heady with this. We started doing more of these kinds of things. Um, and I, I, <clears throat> here's one where you take that same flow trace animation and you overlay it on top of uh, the train so you can see it in context, which changes the dynamic, which is pretty cool. So now we're seeing that same idea, but where it's actually physically located. So this is a really cool scientific visualization. <coughs> um, you know, we want awards for this kind of stuff. This is, this is really cool stuff, if I may say so myself. <laughs> All right, so, and then uh, this is the best one that we did, right? So this is a watershed. I'm a civil engineer and my background is in civil engineering. We did this lovely animation of a watershed analysis and we did it and so that you had it. Uh, and then you'll see here in a second, you get some nice 3D effect of what the flow pulse as the water rain falls and then this water moves down through the watershed. Uh, you get this lovely flow pulse and you're seeing that animated in 3D so that as the flow goes down, you get this I think that's just pretty cool. I'm just admiring my work. That's cool. <laughs> we thought we were awesome. We thought that we were doing, in fact, we were. In, in this field, this is the best visualization that had ever been done. We took it to conferences, we got awards, we got accolades. It was just really cool, because it highlights and shows exactly what's going on in this watershed. So then, we said, okay, we're gonna build this new service 
around this capability. So we went out and we bought Google Earth Enterprise. We built ourselves our own globe. We put all kinds of data on top of this. Um, we built, had an embedded web page. We worked with some of the commands within the Department of Defense to get them to use this so that they would overlay their data on top of it. Um, it was awesome, right? We won awards. We even had portable globes for the locations where you had low bandwidth, where troops were deployed. You could take this out and you could actually visualize data in context right there where you're, uh, uh, where you're, um, where you're at, so you didn't have to use bandwidth to, to uh, move the imagery back and forth. We had smartphone, smartphone development going on and it was an absolute fail, <laughs> right? We spent five years, I don't know how many million dollars, and in the end, it was canceled and nobody wanted it. Now that's kind of crushing, right? That was cool animation, that was cool stuff. And so for the science and the engineer, the scientist and the engineer, I'm like, what's wrong with you people? Can't you see the beauty of my work? And what I had failed to recognize <coughs> is this. Okay, so this is a very simple animation. And it's a little blurry, so I apologize. We did this other thing where the program management program of the core, the data, we just overlaid it with some dots. And right there, if you stop, that's got the phone number of the project manager for this project that's got a red, so it's out of status, and then it has the financials for why that particular project is in the red. And we showed that to the generals and they went crazy for this. Dots on a map. All they wanted was dots on a map that was connected to information that they needed, information that they utilized and that was valuable for them to get their work done. And so I thought, hmm, okay, that's the problem. The problem is that we, in developing all this cool visualization and all this exciting stuff, forgot to recognize the value in the visualization, the value in the system, is not in the visualization. The value is in the information that you convey to the user. And when the user syncs or they, uh, they resonate with the data that you're trying to present to them, then you're gonna have success. So we took that and we said, okay, oh, here, this is my funnel, right? So you change your perception. <laughs> and you say, all right, what are we doing wrong here? And we try to figure out how you can improve what you're doing. So, that's what we did. We had another, uh, the Corps of Engineers is responsible for emergency response and the, uh, during um, flooding crises. So there's all kinds of levees and waterways that, uh, especially up and down the Mississippi River. And in night, uh, what they would do is during a flood, they would actually go out with, and this is now only five years ago, they would go out with a camera and a phone and a clipboard and a GPS, and these guys would be fumbling around with the stuff in their backpack. Pack. They would drive up and down the levees, looking for places where water was flowing up underneath the levee, looking for breaches, looking for odd things that were taking place. And then they would write down, take the coordinates, make a phone call if they thought it was serious, and then they would go back to their hotel and transcribe all that information and upload all those images to the database, the official Corps of Engineers Emergency Management Database. And they would be spending hours and hours and hours and hours. And in 2011, um, got a phone call from, well, this is a, a helicopter view of the flooding that took place on the Mississippi River in 2011. It was huge. It was, in fact, the most water that has been there since 1927 when the Great Flood of 1927 happened happened um, at the time, the Mississippi River was dumping more than the Amazon River. There was a huge amount of water that was coming down in 2001, flooding everywhere. So I got a phone call from one of the uh, managers, uh, one of these guys who led a team out on the levees, and he said, help, we gotta do something. So we took some of that same research that we had done on developing smartphone apps, and we built this thing called MICA, our Mobile Information Collection Application. We put it on, Androids, and we used basically the same infrastructure that we had had, but we looked at it and we said, okay, what really is, what do they want to do with this? What information do they need? And we worked very hard, and, and uh, uh, one of the presenters today uh, talked about building a user interface and working with the customers, and that's what we actually did. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out what they really wanted. Now, we put this together in just a few weeks, so it was not um, as elegant as some of the other things that we, done, that we have done in the past. But they started taking these Android phones out and using them. 
and collecting information and putting it back up onto basically dots on a map again, right? Very simple. Uh, technically, this is, you know, anybody can, can mash this up in very little amount of time. It was not particularly difficult. It was supposed to have a lovely animation. <coughs> what you would see if my video was working is it zooms down in and it clicks on one of these little points and someone had taken a photograph of a farmer with his tractor with a pump pumping water from his fields back up over over the top of the levee. And the inspector didn't know if that was going to be a problem or not. Now think about that. In the past, if, he, if you're out there on the levee and you didn't know that it was going to be a problem because you weren't a trained engineer, you would have to make a phone call and you may be three or four hours out on this levee in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes you'd have to go back where you had cell service, you'd make a phone call, you would then get somebody to come out there. So now you're six or seven hours later to determine whether or not this farmer pumping was a problem. With the cell phones and with the Android and it would automatically synchronize the data back to the database and then display on the map, the engineers at the headquarters could look at that video within a matter of minutes and then tell that individual, that levy inspector, whether or not that was a problem. So it reduced the turnaround time for solving a problem from sometimes eight to 12 hours down to a matter of minutes. And that right there was the key that made this particular project massively successful. So we got kudos from So this was unsolicited. This guy made this for his public affairs office for the command for this district during this flood fight to show the capabilities that they were doing. And so that then we knew we we made a success. And really the issue was finding out what the need was, finding out, making sure that the visualization and the data that we were providing was exactly what they needed. And it and it worked out that even in their command center, instead of briefing from PowerPoints or briefing from uh, you know, they would actually brief from our display. So they would take the, the visualization that we were providing, they would put it up there, and they would brief and they would go and say, is this a problem, is this a problem? And they would clear it and move it down to a, a cleared spot uh, in, in the, in the, um, uh, on the portal. So this was a huge success. It was much simpler. The visualization was very uh, minimal. Now that doesn't mean that the other visualization was bad. In fact, it's still some of the best stuff that I've seen out there for looking at water resources and how it flows and how it moves. But this particular one was massively successful because we looked at exactly what the users needed, exactly what they wanted, and we helped solve their problem. And that in the end is the message that I wanted to convey to you today is that when you're putting together these projects, when you're doing things, make sure that you understand their problem, the customer, whoever that is. It could be an internal customer, external, external customer. Make sure you understand the problem and that you're solving that problem. And then you can eventually put in more and more things if you want to that helps them solve the problem. So, so what? I love, uh, if you've ever seen any of Gary Larson, the far side, right? Uh, someone's building the will, and next to him, someone's building the parking meter, right? So <laughs> he, he understands the real problem, the way to make things work. So what do you do? Focus on the mission. It's not about the technology. It's not about, you know, all of these things that we talked about here are good and they're valuable to help you tell a story, but that's the issue. Tell the story. Get the information that they need. It's about the problem and help them solve their problem. Uh, another lesson that we learned through this is that engage the enterprise, right? So if you're, especially for government agencies, there's a lot of um, effort to go around people to get something that you want done and find somebody um, that you want 
if you want to get something done, a lot of people will say, well, go to the leader and convince them, and then they will tell everybody what to do. Well, yes, that can work, and all along the way, you build lots and lots of enemies, right? Because everyone's resentful that you got something done over their heads. So what we have found is to go through the enterprise, work with them, help them change their mind by solving their problems. Um, identify who that uh, decision maker is, and then let them lead the change. And that's that kernel, right? We found the kernel. He was our biggest proponent. He was telling everybody, and that actually is what made it so that this system was adopted by the Corps of Engineers is now an actual operational system that they're using uh, on a day-to-day -day basis right now. The other one, no, one's even, no one can even remember the name. So you've got to find those people and share the glory. I took this uh, particular kernel and uh, um, uh, asked him to be the keynote speaker at a water resources conference so he could highlight his, his division and highlight the work that he has done. Um, so he's still one of our greatest proponents because of, of, of finding him and making him, sharing in that success. Um, another thing too, a lot of people are afraid to think differently or to think outside the box. Don't be. Take, take a risk, even if you fail, learn from your mistakes and move on. And be ready because opportunity seldom knocks twice, right? We were ready because of the previous failure. We were right ready to go. We had something on the ground that we transitioned and made it into a, a successful um, uh, application. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you. And now, the other presentation had some really cool videos that I was going to show. So at the end of the presentation, these will work. While you're asking me questions, I will show you some of the other stuff that I do, which is uh, supercomputing, big. We do, um, we have six of the top 50 fastest computers in the world that we run. Um, we do things that save people's lives. So this is my new, new real position. This is the AMRAP, as you can see. Um, it actually uh, deflects the blast in such a way that it saves people's lives. This is looking at uh, a, a system that reduces the amount of FOD that suck, is sucked up from a um, from runway into the aircraft. This is a modular barrier. That, uh, and this is all simulated data. This is not animations based upon Hollywood. This is actual data that's simulated in our supercomputers. Um, this is a, an explosion looking at a dual roof system so that you can uh, protect soldiers from incoming uh, artillery. Um, and actually, that's a fully coupled structural uh, and blast effects simulation. Um, we do some really cool visualizations. So this is eye candy. Uh, I didn't do any of these, right? But this is this is the kind of stuff that uh, the team that I'm involved in does at the Data Analysis and Analytics Center. So, as you're watching that, any questions? 